Hello from your National Weather Service. I want to take a few minutes to show you a system that we have for sending you weather alerts. It's called the NWS Interactive and it provides an opportunity for you to customize the different weather alerts that you can receive and different ways that you can receive them. In order to sign up for this free service, the first thing you want to do is go to inws.ncep.noaa.gov or just search Google or one of your search engines for inter Interactive NWS. First thing you want to do is click on the little register button and you'll come up with a quick little list, just your name and your organization and your job title, your city location. Choose an email address that they're going to confirm with you and develop a password. You can see that you have uh, particular characteristics that you have to do in order to get that password. Our alerting system is designed for our partners across the different agencies including law enforcement, emergency managers, first responders, fire, transportation, public officials like a school superintendent or a transportation manager for a district and a variety of other different government partners. Once you're, if you're registered it takes oh maybe 24 to 48 hours to get information back to you and uh, then you're ready to log in and set up your account. So the first thing you're going to do once you log in is you're going to go to account settings. This is a little button on the left hand side up here and in your account settings you're going to set up your email address and you can choose the one you originally signed up for or if you have a different one that is more of your operational style one you can put it in there. And then you want if you'd like information sent as a text message then you're going to click on this little cell phone number here and click on the little button there. The first time you do choose the cell phone method uh, to get a text message and after you send your changes you'll get a little text that's sent to you with a code. That's just to confirm that we are sending the messages to the right uh, tele uh, cell phone. After you've set up your cell phone uh, information and your email information, you can choose back and forth at any time whether you want to get it from both angles or if you just want from one or the other. And you can click those two buttons to make that happen. Once you do set up your initial account, you want to set up some edit areas. And it's fairly simple to do. There's three different techniques. Uh, the first technique is by a point location. So you can type in, uh, say, Haley, Idaho and uh, you can search by that. You can click on that and what it will do is basically put you as a point location kind of like a zip code locale and you can choose the different weather elements you want to be alerted for. So let's say we want to be severe weather and winter storms and you hit save and over on the left hand side now you can see that that point location has showed up. If you're not certain what's available in the different alerting elements if you go to the FAQ, you can see what each of those are. So in essence, severe is related to thunderstorms and tornadoes. Winter weathers are big winter storms, ice storms, blizzards, and so forth. Hydrology shows our different statements for like river flooding and for aerial flooding, like in the wintertime we have uh, sheet flooding going on, and also our flash floods that occur typically in the summertime. If you are traveling to coastal areas, maybe you're uh, assisting with a search and rescue event out there, or maybe you're with Red Cross, uh, and going out in those directions, you want to sign up and get marine alerts, coastal alerts, and also a tropical alerts. So that's like for hurricanes. Uh, if you're working at airports or concerns there, click on aviation. The non-precipitation, these are the elements that are like blowing and drifting uh, dust. Uh, your high wind warnings, you can see the variety that's with that. We also partner with our emergency responders and law enforcement. So any civil emergency message, you click that button, you'll get alerted for those fire weather that happens uh, typically in the summer season and then I always encourage you to click on the other button because a lot of times we have uh, what we call special weather statements that we put out for significant weather but it's not necessarily meeting the criteria for severe thunderstorms so those are the different elements you can choose let's go back again and look at different types of alerting areas so besides a point location like we showed you Haley a moment ago let's go in and choose a county so in this instance we're going to click county or come down here and click Idaho or if you're going somewhere else you can choose that and let's say then we want to go to uh, Butte County so we're going to click on that and you can see that Butte County now is highlighted and then you can choose which weather elements you want to be alerted for and uh, it's already filled in the name for that you just hit save and you'll notice now on the left hand side Butte County is showing up Let's say about halfway through the season you decide, you know what, I need to make an edit change and I need to now add some information related to flash floods. Then you want to click on the little hydrology button by just clicking on it and that pops it up and then hit the save button. And now 
that particular alert will show up for Butte County. Now those are fairly easy ways to set up uh, alert areas, either by a point location or by a county. But I think the flexibility of this system is being able to draw your own polygons. So if you click on the polygon button and then zoom into your area, let's say you have some, some locations down here in the Raft River area that you want to uh, deal with, you can basically come in here and draw your own edit area called a polygon. And then once you do that, you click what you want to be alerted for, give it a name, so Raft River Area, make sure we spell it right, and then you're ready to go ahead and hit the Save button. And now you'll see on the left-hand side that Raft River shows up, and you can see that. Now one of the powerful portions of doing one of these is, let's say you're uh, working for a transportation district or you're uh, part of your school district area, you can go ahead and do a polygon area and zoom in, and let's say you have a school bus route that you need to highlight. So you can zoom in fairly detailed, so let's try it down here in uh, Franklin County. And we want to do a bus route that comes along, uh, let's say, from Weston down here. So you can basically draw in your little edit area. And then call it uh, Weston South. And you want to get just winter storms, and you can click on that. And then let's say you are the supertation uh, manager, you want to add a second area, and we do a polygon. And let's go back in and zoom into the western area. Hopefully you don't get seasick while we're zooming along that. And now let's draw a polygon that goes north out of Weston along that same particular road. And we'll call that Weston North. And on that one, I want severe thunderstorms also. And you can hit save. Again, at any time, you can go in and change those. So I notice, you know, we have a little uh, misspelling there. So we can quickly go in and change that so that it's uh, proper spelling. And let's go ahead and hit that other button like we missed there. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing with this uh, particular one, just to make sure that both of them are consistent. And we want severe weather and other. So that's the flexibility of the monitoring uh, our different weather elements and developing your own personal edit areas. Once you do that and choose the, the different weather elements you want to be alerted for, you'll notice in the main table here, these are different areas that have been alerted over the past couple of days. And you can see the different edit areas showing up. So that's a Rexburg, a BYU, Idaho area that was drawn. Here's one, a, a travel corridor from Pocatello to Idaho Falls. Uh, here's St. Anthony to Ashton Hill, a county. Here's a city location. So you basically can make as many of these little edit areas that are necessary for you to operate. When you do get a message, uh, it's going to send you a quick little text message or email, and it'll have a link to it. And once that happens, you can basically click on that link, and it'll take you to a map that looks like this for the particular edit area. So this is the warning that was issued. And here's the little edit areas that I have that touched in the warning. And then down below is the actual detailed text. So the alerts that you're going to get are going to be fairly short, just a kind of a heads up. And then once you look at the, that and click on the link, then you can get all the detailed information that you need for that particular message that was sent to you. Again, the National Weather Service appreciates all that you do for us, and we want to make sure that you get the most information available to you. And so I encourage you to sign up for this NWS alerting system and share it with your different partners that are part of that list. One final area I want to show you is if you live in an area that's impacted by our rivers, you can actually add river alerts. So you do that down here in the hydro, hydro, hydrology alert points area, and you click on the little alert area, and you're going to choose uh, by state. You're going to click on Idaho. You hit search, and you'll see all these little blue dots or green dots that show up. So if you want to choose a particular alerting area, go ahead and just click on it. It'll fill it in down here, and then you can choose what you want to be alerted for. Uh, forecast information and or observations. So you get to choose those elements, hit the save button, and now you'll see it that it shows up down here on our list, that there's the, the Teton River near Driggs. So the National Weather Service is here to provide service to you. If you ever have questions or concerns, you can always call us 24 hours a day at 208-233-0834. So we do encourage you to, to call if you need to talk to a weather forecaster. 
In addition to that, you can always send us information directly to our forecast staff at pocatello.weather at noaa.gov. So we appreciate this opportunity that you took the time to watch this. Uh, if you do have any questions, you can always uh, call our office and ask for Vernon Preston. And the uh, phone number, the general office hours is uh, basically 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Phone number for that is 208-232-9306. Thank you again for watching, and we hope this assists you in your operations. Take care.